Okay, uh, again, uh, just interrupt. So, tinatanong kanina ni Doyce, I believe. Okay, so this is one definition of citizen science. The engagement of the general public in the processes of science. It's a very general, rather vague uh, definition, but uh, it is a definition that works for everybody. Okay. Uh, it is, in a way, uh, a form of participatory data collection. Okay. Uh, and so, yung PCRA. The participatory coastal resource assessment is actually a form of citizen science. Uh, but yung processes ng science uh, is not just data collection. Uh, and for some people, uh, a full version of citizen science involves the volunteers in processing and making the findings known to others and even uh, advocating uh, behavior change in communities uh, is still considered part of citizen science. And so like sinabi ko kanina, the reason uh, we did not put this in the videos is because nag evolve to sa bawat engagement, sa bawat lugar. Sometimes you will start just with data collection. Sometimes you will end with just data collection. But in other places, you uh, might find yourself in a situation where you will get more done if you bring it all the way to presentation involving the volunteers, even in presenting the results of the work. It's the direction many sectors are pursuing. And in fact, one reason it's rather urgent that we train more people to be trainers of these methods is because uh, we suspect now pretty soon uh, because of certain funding sources, lalapitan kayo ng madaming sectors to provide the training and supervise the work of their citizen science. Citizen science is very effective in raising awareness. Hindi mo makukuha sa lecture lang yung awareness na yon. People have to see for themselves what's happening, for example, sa coral reef. And uh, uh, the more they learn, the more they understand what's going on, the greater the role they play in the efforts to manage or conserve the reef. Uh, you will see greater buy-in, you will uh, see better compliance to regulations, and all that will help you sustain the effort. And that is also why we uh, argue that the best way to process the data is in the presence of your host community. And we can tell you about uh, experiences we've had in, in that direction. For our purposes as trainers and uh, team scientists, roles that must be defined in particular citizen science deployments. Very important yung decision about saan gagawin yung survey, kailan gagawin yung survey, at hindi lang yung methods. So uh, for the rest of this lecture, you we're going to focus on the where. Okay. The methods, you know, yung material and as a video, and you will learn the details more pag face to face na yung training, pag pinuntahan na kayo ng members ng team, magfo focus tayo 
sa where because ito yung i think pinakamahirap na ituro sa citizen scientists okay and this is where uh, everybody in this training comes in saan ilalagay yung survey station okay so uh, the survey station like we showed you is a 75 meter by 25 meter rectangle or parallelogram or polygon or in some cases it's shaped like a c ideally it is 1875 square meters and it is on the reef slope okay the deepest end is five to six meters uh the shallow end uh shouldn't be shallower than maybe one and a half kasi lalabas na yung monopod sa tubig and as you can see here that station is very big okay you can see a banka on the left corner you can see some divers here this is about the area of four basketball courts or uh, about one fourth of a football soccer pitch. Okay. Uh, in previous trainings, many of you were exposed to the C5 method that we used for the National Assessment of Coral Reef Environments, uh, among other projects. And that involves five randomly deployed 50 meter transects. And you take uh, pictures, 250 pictures at least, of the station at random places. The C30 method of L1 uh, involves taking at least 30 but ideally around 50 images at random places around the reef and yun nga kung napapansin nyo na lagi dito nag end up or dito sa kabilang end maybe dahil merong mali, mahinang current na hindi masyadong napapansin ang gawin nyo is patigilin nyo sila then you tell them to go to the area that's under sample, you go to an arbitrary point here, and then it could pull in you lang yung pag randomize. Para uh, maganda yung spread ng stations. Hello, po, Sir Al. Yes, go ahead. Apo, yun. Sir, di pa po, uh, sabi nyo kanina kapag ka po yung team ay dito lang po sa side magmo-monitor lilipat po sila sa kabila yung direction ba sir na gagamitin nila ay uh, same lang po doon sa ano itutuloy lang nila yung ano po mm -hmm. or panibagong ano po yun so halimbawa so, po, halimbawa nasa picture 20 ka na uh, uh, picture 20 so patigilin mo na sila kasi napansin mo na lagi sila nasa isang end yung Magdalin nyo sila sa isang point and then gamitin mo lang yung random number for picture number 21 starting from ah, okay. that arbitrary point uh, and then just continue using ah, the rest hanggang, of the table user, of random ay, hanggang, numbers. Hanggang sa matapos po yung 30 pictures po na dapat makuha. Yes. yes. Ah, okay. So wala ka na kailangan baguhin. Ang kailangan mo lang is patigilin sila, dalin mo doon sa kabilang end uh, and then sabihin nyo na kung saan mo sila iniwan, ituloy nyo yung random direction at distance and then you take the 21st picture onwards. Okay po. Okay po. Thank you po, Sir Al. Okay. Merong question kung, back, kung walang reef slope yung MPA. I will, that's the first example na gagamitin ko. So I will answer that question mamaya. Thank you for the question. Hello, sir. Go ahead. 
um, siguro it's still a challenge. Uh, case to case siguro yung, for example, yung gumagawa ng PCRA before, then use sila na malapit lang kung saan makita may corals doon, mag doon na sila mag-monitor. Pero ngayon na introduce na dapat doon sa, doon talaga sa slope. Kasi baka, baka sa tingin nila ay malami, <laughs> malayo na kami sa isla. Baka, <laughs> okay. diba, baka mag, mag back out. So, uh, it's still very helpful na isali talaga ang information kung bakit doon tayo sa crest then sa slope na tayo mag uh, mag-survey kasi uh, based on experience nakita namin yan sa Islam na may kasi before nandoon na lang kami sa MPA kasi naka ano na yon identified na yon na area then ngayon uh, may area naman pala na may crest may may slope na uh, for long term monitoring so dapat uh, i-introduce pa rin ang It, itong background na na information. Yes. Uh, yung one reason na I think in addition to what you said na important na medyo palawakin nyo yung paningin ng mga community partners nyo is because as we know uh, the protected areas in the Philippines are too small. Uh, There, there was a study, and I don't recall the numbers, pero I can send to you uh, my paper where I cited that, or and I can send to you the paper that I cited. Uh, they said something like a median uh, diameter ng reef uh, MPA sa Pilipinas ay nasa... Um, I don't remember the numbers, parang 300 something meters. Pero compared to the rest of the world, ang median diameter ng MPA ay 2 kilometers. Okay. So uh, that's one reason why kailangan i-encourage sila na kailangan nyo makita yung the rest of the reef. Hindi lang yung part na gusto nyong protektahan or madaling protektahan. The, the second reason uh, why you, we need to uh, drive them to, to see the other parts of the reef is very often mali yung part ng reef na pinoprotektahan nila. Uh, and I will show this again mamaya, pero ang mas maiksing sagot is usually pupuntahan nila yung madaming coral. At yun ay protect nila. Usually, yung lugar na madaming coral, malapit din sa kanila. Okay. Pero, ang problema doon, madalas, madaming ang coral, pero iisa o dadalawa o tatatlong species lang. And usually, yung species na yon ay merong vulnerabilities. Like kung acropora yan, madaling mag-bleach and so on. And so, kung nakafocus sila doon, sa malapit sa amin, madaming coral, usually it's the wrong place. Okay. Uh, I'm not saying hindi dapat pinoprotektahan yon, pero kung doon may ilalagay lahat ng investment mo, uh, mas likely kayong mag-fail. Hindi climate resilient, for example, yung MPA na yun. I'll explain that later. Uh, I should mention para one other thing uh, about these places na malapit sa tabi, malapit dun sa mga communities na nagpoprotect sa kanila. Pag, ang problema rin kasi dun sa kung hindi kayo sa reef slope nag-work, mas madaming stretches ng buhangin. Uh, if you look at this picture, notice na eh, ayun yung mga buhangin. No? Okay. Uh, reef slope is more likely hard bottom. Which means, uh, mas, uh, mas malaking proportion ng area ang pwedeng tubuan ng coral. Very few corals can live on sand, especially kung maalon. Okay. So, yung isang criterion din bakit sa reef slope is because mas likely na homogenous yung substrate. Okay. Hindi necessarily mataas yung 
coral cover pero may potential na maging mataas yung coral cover dahil matigas yung ilalim dun sa kantiladong bahagi ng reef. Uh, but I think I can answer the questions better uh, in a few more slides. Okay, so yung kung saan ilalagay yung station should be based on ano ba yung dahilan kung bakit uh, sinasurvey yun to begin with. And usually, uh, it's because of a protected area. Okay. And like I said, most of our protected areas are small. Uh, and that's also why they're not as effective as they could be. Um, there's, there's a good paper by uh, Richard Mualil, for example, comparing yung potential ng maliit na protected areas as opposed to, to Bataha, which is very big. And so usually yung fish biomass is about 17 times higher. The other objective ng mga surveys is to assess status of reefs uh, in small areas, but in some cases, it's a, a bigger project that assesses uh, an, a bay, a cluster of islands, uh, a channel, like a VIP, or a cluster of towns, or even provinces. Okay, let's look at particular examples okay, where the station should be uh, set up. Ang tinuturo namin sa citizen scientist is merong reef of interest kayo. Okay. Yung MPA nyo, madalas. Okay. Pero kung gusto nyo maintindihan kung ano yung nangyayari dun sa reef of interest nyo, kailangan nyo ng pangalawang reef. Okay. So, we don't tell them to relocate the MPA we tell them that for us to better monitor and measure the effectiveness of whatever MPA you are working in, there must be a second reef to compare it to. And that second reef must, must be monitored by the same team that's measuring or monitoring the reef of interest. Okay. So, uh, first example, this is Talim Bay, the smallest bay in uh, Batangas province. It's essentially a cove. Uh, and yung nasa arrow sa left is uh, arguably the best managed protected area in this town. Okay. Uh, Reina. Yung Yung station dito is actually nasa buffer zone. Okay. Yung monitor ay hindi yung core zone. Yung core zone niya nandi dito sa harap ng reef. Okay. Yung reef na, yung bagay ng reef na monitor is the same fringing reef. But nasa isang channel na papunta doon sa community that manages this reef. Here. So, natatanaw naman nila iyan, pero yung buffer zone na yan, kung saan yung arrow, dyan nila dinadala yung mga turista. Because they have a, a, a project there, one of the funders is DNR. It's one of those eco-friendly um, enterprises by the community. So, it's a fringing reef, nakadikit sa land. It's a well-developed reef. There's a very clear reef flat. And then nakikita niyo sa image kung saan nababasag yung alon, that's the reef crest. Okay. That is their reef of interest. So hindi siya ideal, hindi siya nakaharap sa habagat, but doon sila interesado. So we monitor that. Okay. Uh, this is another protected area. Uh, it's not managed as well. It's not even... Uh, a well-developed reef, it's uh, 
some will argue a sandbar with corals growing on them. Uh, others will probably tell you na, no, it's an incipient reef. It doesn't matter. It's not well developed. It's not fringing. Uh, but they are interested in that reef. So, kailangan i-monitor. Okay. So, kung ano yung interest ng community, just go along with it. Uh, it might be too shallow. Uh, so, you will have to make some adjustments. And in some cases, hindi mag-work yung methods. Uh, then, hindi mag-work itong tinuturo namin sa inyo. But, the point dito is wherever they're interested, okay, you monitor that reef. But you convince them that you must have a second reef. The second reef must not be too far from the reef of interest. And that second reef is where you should try and make sure that the survey station there is on the upper reef slope and it's on the part of the reef na nakaharap sa amihan or sa habagat. So here, isang candidate is ito. Okay. Um, it's to me though, too close to the MPA. So yung isang tumatakas do sa MPA, makikita mo pa dyan. Uh, if you really want a good comparison reef, this is a better one. Nakaharap siya sa habagat. It is also well developed. It is in the same barangay. Uh, and it is a better comparison reef. And later, I'll show you. Yung comparison reef kasi because it is facing the monsoons, because it's on a well-developed reef, okay, a fringing one, this tells you, Halimbawa, how high coral cover can be in this area. Okay. How rich the corals could be in this area. And so the difference between the two reefs if there is a difference, is what you will need to be able to notice. If ito lang ang sinasurvey mo, yung reef of interest, wala kang matututunan dyan, kailangan mong meron kang pagkukumparahan. And ito yung pagkukumparahan mo. And that's why we call it a comparison reef. Uh, there's another way I explain the comparison reef, but maybe I'll uh, explain it better kung tinanong niyo na lang ako. Okay. So, whatever it is, kung interested kayo in using these methods to measure the effectiveness of MPAs, you make sure to convince the community not just to monitor the reef of interest. Okay. Even if that reef of interest is not well developed, even if that reef of interest is not a fringing reef, even if that reef of interest is not facing the monsoons, even if that reef of interest is on the reef flat, you know, whatever it is, you should have a second station. And uh, that should be a comparison reef that faces the monsoons and it should be well-developed. Uh, someone is raising their hands here. Okay, go ahead. Uh, Ma'am Zeni, you're raising your hand, po. Po, oh, sorry, sorry, ko na ano? Wala. Ano na lower? No. Kanina pa siguro yan. Sorry, ah, hindi sorry. Na lower. Okay, meron nato sa chat box. Uh, can Can you read it, Rainy? What? Um. Ma'am Vivian is asking, what if walang reef slope yung MPA para dun ilagay yung survey station? San pa posibleng ilagay? At yung second station, yung second question niya po is, ilang survey station ang dapat? Okay lang ba na isa lang? Uh, 
the for the first question you you go to the part that is of the right depth between two to six meters depth uh even if it's not a risto okay so you go to the maybe the center or the outer edge of that mpa kung saan tama yung depth the closest you can get to yung nakaharap sa amihan or habagat uh, and that's where you put it in effect kung saan mag work yung methods you put the station there uh, Suggestion though, iwasan nyo yung stretches ng buhangin. You, you look for the part of that MPA na, na bato yung ilalim. Kung maghahalo sila, at least ano, uh, hindi malaking patch ng buhangin at bato, but rather buhangin at bato na interspersed sa isa't isa. Katulad nung nasa drone shot kanina ng station. Yung pangalawa, ilan, uh, let's start with one. Okay. Uh, and I will give you examples where the island is bigger. Pero when you're talking about kilometers na, then you have to start talking about more than one station. Is the short answer. Pero if, I am, if you're not satisfied with that answer, uh, in the succeeding slides, uh, please ask me again. Uh, because like I said, so umpisa, yeah. we're also learning how to explain these things better in less time. And uh, so that's why the questions are very valuable. Okay, so I'll proceed, Muna. Sir, I'll... Yes, go ahead. Sir, sir I'll... Ano tawag dun sa sa compare sa reef where you compare it? Can you call it a reference reef? Ah uh, yes, you can call it a reference reef because as I will show you later, mas maintindihan niyo yung paggamit ng scale at ng scorecard kung meron kayo ng comparison reef. Ah uh, pero yung yung isang way na Pina, pinagamit ko to explain that uh, sa, sa BFAR for example kung palipat-lipat ka ng uh, bansa okay, let's say you're traveling within Asia uh, some countries are very expensive to live in uh, Japan for example and to a certain extent Singapore it's very expensive to live in these places. Hong Kong, definitely. In other places naman, the cost of living is lower. Okay. So if you just convert halimbawa yung presyo ng newspaper sa Tokyo, convert mo to pesos, compare mo sa presyo ng dyaryo sa Pilipinas and so on, the comparison is not very good. Okay. Dahil iba-iba yung kapal ng dyaryo, iba-iba yung quality, iba-iba yung coverage, and so on. Pero, uh, if, you have, if you want a good idea of cost of living across these places, what you can do is pumunta ka ng McDonald's sa lahat ng mga bansa ngayon. You order the same thing, like a Big Mac in Hawaii as opposed to a Big Mac in Japan, a Big Mac in Hong Kong. You convert all those prices to the same currency. You're now talking about the same product, and therefore you have a better idea of which places are mas mahal than other places. Same thing with the comparison reef. Okay, if everybody applies the same criteria for the comparison reef, it's on the upper reef slope of a well-developed fringing reef, meaning may klarong reef flat. Okay. at nakaharap siya sa amihan or habagat, okay. that is your Big Mac. Okay. And if all the citizen science teams have a Big Mac, okay, ma-realize natin na in parts of Palawan, ano ang mataas na coral cover doon ay masyadong mataas sa ibang parts ng bansa. Okay. So the comparison reef, allows us a common baseline 
a baseline that is locally relevant. Okay. The other way of saying that, uh, hopefully, is the simplest one and clearest one, but you tell me if this makes sense. The comparison reef tells you how good a reef could be in that particular area. Siya yung local benchmark. Does that help? You tell me now because uh, this is where we learn how to explain this better from the people we just explained it to. So please uh, react, say something, or even uh, you know a thumbs up or a heart. Should I proceed? Moderators. Well, I'm pink heart. Okay. okay. Actually, I can't even figure out paano ko makita in gallery. <laughs> okay. Oops. So let's look at some examples this time. So now our objective natin is to do an assessment of a small area. We're not even talking about MPAs. We just need to know how the reefs in that area are. Okay. And we're talking about a reef that's less than a kilometer long. A kilometer is an arbitrary number, actually. So, Limbawa, we are interested in uh, monitoring this reef that is part of uh, Bulinao. Okay. The best place where to do that survey is yung nasa green na line. Why? Well, notice the reef is well developed. May reef flat. Okay. You can even argue na parang nagsisimula na siya maging barrier reef. Okay. And to get the pulse of that reef, see how it's doing, you go to the part na nakaharap, in this case, sa Amihan, dahil wala siyang part na nakaharap sa Bagat. And you put your survey station there. You put one station there. Okay. You can see the scale sa lower left. That bar on the lower left it says 500 meters. Okay, so you can put the station anywhere there. This one, uh, medio complicated. There appears to be a river, but maybe the river is not very strong because otherwise you will not get a coral reef developing near a river because usually a river is too silty and the salinity drops and that will kill the corals. But if you look carefully, makikita nyo yung characteristics ng harap ng reef. Okay. Notice there is a sandy part. Then you will see the reef crest okay, with this dark green zone. Uh, which depends on the time of year na kinuato, which could be sargassum. And then beyond that, makikita nyo kantilado. So, you want to get the pulse of uh, these reefs. Since technically, dalawang magkahiwalay na reef to, yung isa mas mahaba, you put it somewhere nakaharap sa Amihan, dahil walang part na nakaharap sa Bagat, and dito, you put it here. Okay, uh, reminder though, medyo pababasag na ng reef slope na to yung alon dito. Okay, so technically, ang better spot for this kung isang station lang magagawa nyo ay ito. Okay, and since medyo mahaba yan, uh, you might want to start thinking about more than one station, but the, the distance bar says 300 meters. So that is just about a little more than a kilometer long. So okay lang isa sa reef na yan. Okay, this one is a small island. It's about mm, 
what, 900 meters long. Uh, notice again, mapapansin nyo sa Allen Coral Atlas, lalo na, this is the front of the reef. Makikita nyo na again, there's a sandy part, and then you have this edge, that's the reef crest, and the top of the reef slope, the upper reef slope. And notice na it's developed dun sa nakaharap sa abagat in this case. Not so much dun sa amihan side. Okay. So the well-developed part of the reef in places like this is usually, not always, facing the amihan or the habagat. If you need to do a survey for this island, the best place for that station is somewhere in this green area. Okay, then Hugan Island. Uh, notice the distance bar, it's 200 meters scale bar. So this island is about a kilometer. But notice saan distinct again yung reef. Okay, you can see the reef flat. You can see that dark green line and then the reef slope, cantilado. Best places for monitoring the two sides. It now has an Amihan facing side, the northeast side, and a southwest facing side. Okay. And if you actually look at the data, because they have four monitoring uh, areas here. Yung isa dito, yung isa dito. Uh, you will find that these two have mostly sand, if I remember correctly. Although I've never been here. I've worked in the surrounding islands, but not Danhugan itself. Okay, this is Kawili. Okay, uh, it's in the middle of the Sulu Sea. It's a fringing reef, but it's right next to an atoll. And notice again, yung describe ko na characteristics. Pag hindi nakaharap sa monsoons, notice it's mostly sand. Okay. Dito, it's firmer, but the best developed part, again, is the part that faces the monsoon, the northeast monsoon, northeast side, southwest monsoon, southwest side. Again, notice yung scale bar says 500 meters, so it's more than a kilometer. Uh, so ideally, dalawa ang station mo. Dito, saka isa dito. Okay. That, that also means na uh, you better make sure na the monsoon is not blowing when you visit these places. Because otherwise you will be stuck surveying not the best places. Like I think we got stuck here because it was too strong here. So for a small reef system, upper reef slope pa din. Now ang objective natin is an assessment. So walang MPA dito. Uh, and so where you put the station, if there was an MPA, is where you should put the comparison reef. Okay. Now, let's start talking about larger areas like a town. Okay. Again, if you have questions, comments, clarifications, feel free to interrupt. This is Leanne again. This is Stalin Bay. And if we didn't have enough resources, these are the best places to monitor because it's on the west coast of Batangas. You just need to be concerned about the part that faces the southwest monsoon, the southwest, southwest edges of the reefs. Uh, although, Dito, you, this reef actually experiences the Amihan as well. Pero, if budget is limited, uh, even just one of these three green areas, put a station there, 
okay na yun. Pero, this is a bigger area. This is about three kilometers long na. So, maybe you should have at least three stations. And this is where I suggest those stations should go. Uh, Lobo. Uh, distance bar says, I can't read it, I think 500 meters. The southwest facing parts are the best places to monitor. Uh, and in fact, uh, this is where we put stations. Actually, we found uh, some other people have been there, uh, including our teams, and they put the stations where we now recommend they should be. Uh, we were following the same criteria. San Juan, Batangas, better known for La Ia, uh, which is this end. Uh, the reefs here are actually pretty small and divided. They have small MPAs here, uh, but uh, they all face the southwest. But there is a northeast facing end uh, should also be assessed, okay? Because this is a larger area. Puerto Galera, okay. Um, again, look at the satellite images. Makikita mo ko saan talaga uh, nagde-developing reef. You can see what looks like a reef flat, but it's not that wide actually. Uh, but the reef slope and the best place is in this case, yung nakaharap sa Amihan, but there is a side na nakaharap sa Abagat. And uh, the reef is also well developed. Pero notice, pag hindi nakaharap sa Amihan or Abagat, it's not that developed. Uh, but if you have the resources, you should survey them as well. Uh, following the rules, I will talk about briefly. Pero kung tatlong stations lang or dalawa lang ang kaya or isa lang, you go to these places in green. Dito, it gets complicated. Okay. Uh, and so I can imagine what our WWF partners uh, have to deal with. Linapakan, Northern Palawan, a large island. The, the scale bar says two kilometers. Okay. So that's a two kilometer distance. Uh, very complicated coastline. I'm sure the coral communities here are. Very interesting. Uh, best places to survey to get an idea of how well these reefs are doing are the places that face the monsoon. Okay. Pero this is where uh, yun nga. Mas madami ng station ang kailangan and now you have to make additional decisions. Because now you have a side that faces the northeast Shaded in red, places that face the southwest, shaded in green. And a lot of the reef perimeter that faces neither the northeast or the southwest. Okay, This is where you start talking about stratified sampling. Strata. You have one... Uh, area na nakaharap sa Amihan, northeast in red, one area facing the southwest, Nahabagat, in green, and yung yellow, there are reef slopes that are not facing the northeast or the southwest. And if you want to do an adequate assessment of an area this large, and you are expected to produce an average coral cover, then you have to stratify. Kung mahaba, kung ano yung haba ng coastline sa one of the three colors, that should be proportional to the number of stations. And since 
most of the reefs are not facing the Amihan or the Habagat. Most of your stations should also be in these yellow areas. Okay. So dito na pumapasok yung, like yung binagit ni Shara earlier about stratifying uh, in proportion to the area of the reef slope or the length or perimeter of the reef slope that's facing the Amihan, Habagat, or not the Amihan, not the Habagat combined. So, uh, maybe I should pause for questions or clarifications before we talk about uh, additional examples of that. So in a situation like this, same thing, we define Ano yung hindi nakaharap sa amihan, hindi nakaharap sa bagat. You define kung ano yung nakaharap sa bagat in green. Define kung ano yung nakaharap sa amihan in red. And in this situation, kung 30% of the reef slope faces the northeast, 20% faces the southwest and 50% does not face either of the two monsoons. And if you can do 10 stations, then you do five in the yellow two in the green three in the red in proportion to their uh, area or perimeter. And then you can compute your average cover and as I'll show you later, use the scales. Sir Al? Ed. Sa, sa ano po, dun po sa stratification na binanggit nyo, for, for Municipality po ba yan? Or yes, in this case, uh, this is roughly uh, the town of Dumaran. Pero I have to be honest, I don't know exactly where the boundaries are. Like itong hmm. isla na to, dalawang bayan to. Bal bali po, ang, kapag sinabi natin, pag yung usapang stratification po, ang pinaka-involved um, po natin doon sa stratification ng stations ay pag-usapang munisipyo na, tama po ba? Uh, pag, pag malawak na area na na kailangan mong mag-produce ng assessment for that malawak na area. And where you say it's malawak enough is pag kilometro na yung pinag-uusapan. Okay. Noted po, sir. Thank you po. Yes. Kasi uh, the, the reason though is na I have to say yung kilometro is kung i-average mo lang ay um, uh, you know, tatlong station. Uh, <laughs> di ba, pag nag-average ka, the more measurements you have, the better. Apa. Ang minimum mo sa statistics ay three. Okay. Mm. Uh, pero, given yung explanation ko, ang minimum natin, kung MPA assessment lang, dalawa. Yung reef of interest at yung comparison reef. Mm -hmm. That's for the objective of assessing MPA effectiveness of small MPAs. Mm -hmm. okay. If you're expected to do an assessment of status of reefs of blank, okay. at yung blank na yun, ay ang area niya ay na sinusukat na in kilometers. That's when you need to do more than three stations and you should go for mas madami than three. Okay. In, in this example, uh, I'm using 10. 
which is a big jump from two. Because <laughs> uh, 10 will require you at least five field days. Na. Oh, ang tagal nun. So, kaya ako po natanong, sir, kasi uh, hindi naman po regular lahat ng itsura ng mga boundaries natin. For example, sa amin, nakapunta naman po kayo sa Candelaria, yung team nyo, eh, parang may small embayment sa amin, pero kasama na yung Santa Cruz. So, ayun po, nilina ko lang po, kasi, uh, ibig sabihin, hindi ko kailangan tumingin doon sa munisipyo. Actually, doon sa pwedeng kung malakihan ang tinitignan halimbawa na i-assess na area uh, okay lang na mag incompa mag ano mag go beyond munisipyo pero nakatingin ka doon sa uh, area na tinitignan tama po ba yung intindi ko yes. yes yung yung sinas yung tinatawag mo na area na tinitingnan is what we refer to as the area of interest ayun po okay. Your area of interest is, in, another way of describing it is, you are expected to, to generate a report about blank, the area of interest. Okay. Now, if the area of interest is a specific reef, uh, like yung mga unang examples ko, uh, like ito mga ito, the uh, ito hindi eh ito isang bahura lang yan eh tuloy-tuloy okay so that's one reef okay so yung area of interest is one reef and the area of interest is small then you just need one or two stations for an assessment okay to assess the status of that reef Pag lumagpas na yung reef sa isang kilometro at pag hindi na siya isang reef, okay, like ito, uh, hindi naman tuloy-tuloy yung reef dito dahil itong reef na to, iba na sa reef na to. At yung reef na ito ay iba na sa reef na to. Okay. And since this is more than 3 kilometers, hindi na pwede isa or dalawa. You need more. Mm. Pero, Dois, in, in this example, uh, if ang sinabi sa'yo ng LGU or ng kliyente mo is, I want an assessment of the reefs of Talim Bay. Hindi na ito ang gagamitin mo na example. Gagawin mo na, okay, so uh, just for for those who have not been here, this is Talim Bay. And notice, madaming reefs ang Talim Bay. Mm. So, if, if your client wants an assessment of Talim Bay, not just uh, a vague status of reefs in Lian. Okay. If it's status of reefs in Lian, uh, and you can only do one or two surveys, dito ko ilalagay sa green. Pero kung status of reefs in Talim Bay, very clear siya na isang specific area na meron mahigit sa isang reef lang. Then you have to start doing this. And Taling Bay is just part of a town. But ang dami na kasi niyang reef at lagpas na siya sa isang kilometro. And that's, dito mo nagagamitin yung, yung proportional to the area of the reef slope in one of the three uh, sectors or strata. Does, does that make uh, sense or di, did I just confuse you more? Yeah, uh, nagets ko po. Malinaw po, sir. Thank you po. Okay. Um, si Ms. Nerisa po, kanina naka-raise yung hand. Hello po. Hello po, sir Al. Go ahead. Apo, yun. Sir, yung, yung ma-identify po ba na area of interest, yung reef area po, ay kailangan may, ma, ma-assess po siya yung lahat po ng area? Or okay lang po na kahit isang area po doon sa na-identify? Uh, so, yung, yung area of interest nyo, uh, yung, 
So, so very important dun sa decision making about saan nilalagay yung station ay kung ano yung area of interest. Kung malaki siya, kung maliit siya, kung madami siyang reef or kung isang reef lang siya. And ang ginagamit natin na arbitrary na cut-off ay whether it's more than a kilometer or less than a kilometer. Now, the other thing na, of course, will affect the decision-making then is kung ano yung budget mo. If uh, inihingian ka ng broad area assessment uh, and tinasabi na you can only do one station, yung compromise mo ay i-apply mo yung rules na dinescribe ko sa unahan before I got to this complicated coastline. Uh, if your budget limits you to one or two stations, gagawin mo yung pinakita ko kanina dun sa earlier slides. Yung sa Lian, yung sa Lobo, and so on. Okay po. Pero, pag very specific na, let's say the, your client tells you and your, let's say the client is i don't know the province or the the mayor i want uh, i want the status of reef so linapakan town and it it's this big with this many reefs and this complicated uh, you will have to ask for a large budget or you will have to tell the client na we have to agree on your area of interest na compatible sa budget mo. Okay, okay po, Sir Al. Pero give, given yung example na sinabi ko, uh, it's like mag kailangan kong lumaktaw eh. Dalawa or tatlo or a minimum of 10. How's that? In other words, when you start applying rules like this, is if you can do ten, at least 10 stations. 10 stations. Pero if you can't do 10, then uh, you don't want to apply these rules. You cannot apply these rules. You go for the simpler rules kanina, which is basta nakaharap sa amihan or habagat. And two or three, one, two or three stations. So one, two, three, or 10 onwards. Pag 10 onwards na, meron ng yellow, green, at red. Pag, ah. pag one, two, or three lang, lahat green, kahit na nakaharap sa amihan or habagat. So, sir, additional follow-up lang po. Um, kung mas malaki siya sa one kilometer or multiple reefs, ang suggestion ay 10 or more? Yes. Okay. Thank you. So, remember, in Talim Bay, we have 14 stations. in Bulinao, we only have six, but we started adding. Because in Bulinao, there's actually two towns there. Okay. Uh, I'm sure there will be additional questions when I add this layer in, but I'm not adding additional requirements. I'm just showing you additional situations. Let's say you're interested in a bay because I use, started using Talim Bay. But in this case, uh, unlike Talim Bay, there are multiple towns. Okay. Uh, I, I use this because it's an old slide, but I will show you an update. Okay. Let's say you're interested in San Miguel Bay. Uh, and San Miguel Bay has several towns. And you're asked to assess the status of reefs in San Miguel Bay. Okay, because uh, we're talking about several towns and a very large bay, definitely more than a kilometer. 
you have to start negotiating. Oh, we need at least 10 stations to do this right. Okay, so how do you do this? Okay, uh, in, in base, medyo, you can go by Amihan Habagat or you can go by this. And I'll show you both. Okay, you divide the bay into three sectors. Yung bay mouth, yung mid bay, and yung bay head. Okay, and you take note of their relative areas. Like notice na medyo malaki yung bay head, medyo maliit yung mid bay, at medyo malaki or malawak yung bay mouth. Okay. So, let's say you noticed based on Allen Coral Atlas that 60% of the reefs of San Miguel Bay are in the bay mouth. 30% in the mid bay, kahit na maliit yung area niya, may mga reef siya. And dito, dahil medyo maputik na, kahit na malakawak yung area, only 10% of this area, uh, only 10% of San Miguel's Bay, San Miguel Bay's reef, reefs, in terms of area ng reef slope, okay, na, hindi mo isasama yung reef flat. So kung ganyan, yung 10 stations mo, Six should be in the bay mouth. Three should be in the mid bay. And 10, one out of 10, 10% 10 in the bay head. Like Kanina, the number of stations is proportional to the area of reef slopes in the stratum. Okay. The reality though is if you look closely at the Allen Coral Atlas, there is a setting there and we can show you the setting mamaya where you can show the reef slope in red here. Those are the reef slopes. Notice the algorithm does not detect reefs here. It doesn't mean walang coral dyan. It just means na you don't have a distinct reef slope there. So kung ganyan din, uh, walang point na mag survey ka dito. You go by the rules kanina na we were showing in uh, Linapakan. This faces the northeast. These do not face the southwest. And there does not appear to be a reef slope facing the southwest. So it's either not facing the southwest and the northeast or facing the northeast, yung red. And yung pag-proportion mo ngayon, kung parang 50-50 and five of your stations are in the red, five in the yellow. So the number of survey stations for each stratum, last bullet, is proportional to the length or area of the reef slope in each stratum. Ang stratum mo could either be outer bay, mid bay, in, inner bay, or northeast facing, southwest facing, or not facing the northeast or the southwest. Three strata. That's the last example. The succeeding slides are supposed to answer why we're suggesting those rules. Pero uh, maybe this is another good point 
to seek clarification. Anybody, please, because it helps us explain this better in less time. And notice it still took me two hours and I'm not done yet. If we're okay, maybe some sign. Thumbs up. Toilet break, please. All right. Uh, uh, Denise, how long? Sir, we have 18 minutes left. <laughs> so three minutes for toilet break <laughs> and 15 <laughs> minutes to wrap this up. Let's see if I can. Okay, so we resume 11.45. Mm, I think I can do it. I should try and do it. For your case study orientation after lunch. Na lang po. Okay. okay. Yeah, we don't have a choice. <laughs> mm -mm, yeah. <laughs> Okay, why? Okay, is everyone back from the quick, super quick CR break, water break? We're back. Um, okay. Thank okay. You. Thank, you. Thank you. So, uh, why are we suggesting these rules? Why are we saying this is what you should teach or tell uh, the community or the volunteers? Okay. So, why focus on the upper leaf slope 
why focus on the reef slope facing the northeast and the southwest? Uh, why must we focus on the well-developed reefs? Okay, so to try and answer that, well, the, actually the answer is the same for all those questions. The reason is on average, the upper reef slope is where you have the most cover and the most variety of corals. Uh, the northeast and the southwest is where you have the most cover and riches, not or, okay, and where the cover and richness is highest is also the well-developed reefs. Uh, and the well-developed reefs, if you remember, are the oldest. Okay, so keeping in mind that we, there's a focus here on coral cover, uh, not richness, which is better sampled with more images and yung C5, but C30 can still be used if we go for C50. Kanina, I made a comment that you should avoid places where you have big stretches of sand, like here. So even within an individual picture ng C30, you can see na hindi pare-pareho yung distribution ng coral. Hindi siya even. In the reef slope, uh, lalo na kung hindi nakaharap sa northeast or the southwest, you will have these situations where the reef is not uniformly hard bottom, but a mix of soft bottom sand or rubble uh, and hard bottom, yung mga bato or mga patay na coral. You, you don't want to be surveying reefs like that and a lot of those reefs are in the lagoon or are not facing the northeast or southwest. And if you end up surveying here, uh, depende ko saan nagpunta yung uh, sampling unit mo, like in this case, transect, ang data mo ay pabago-bago, even if you survey this reef in successive days. So, but if you go to the side that's facing the northeast or the southwest, you will more likely find these places na kung meron stretches ng sand ay maliliit okay, at kalat rather than naipon sa isang side lang. Okay. And as we reported a lot, these are the results of the NACRE surveys, the National Assessment of Coral Reef Environments, a lot of places are in red. Using the scale we proposed, uh, and I will explain the scales later because that justifies the rules I've been talking about the whole day. Okay, so we propose this scale in uh the final form the one shown on the screen is in 2019 we have uh since learned to call this richness because diversity uh involves computations that consider cover as well okay so we started calling them richness instead in addition to the new scales that I showed in the last slide, we also showed you averages for particular bioregions. And the reason we were able to compute these averages is because it did divide namin yung sampling ng buong Pilipinas, yung well-developed reefs na fringing sa buong Pilipinas. We divide namin lahat ng reefs into strata in this case bioregion and within each stratum nag sample kami pumili kami ng reef na isa survey randomly pero pag napili na isang reef pupunta doon sa northeast or southwest side niya that allowed us to come up with these numbers and if you use the same criteria in surveying reefs 
in these bioregions, you can compare your data to these averages, these benchmarks. You can compare them. If you don't use our criteria, this, these benchmarks are not going to be as useful and will actually be uh, potentially misleading. The other reason na we want you to use these scales is because they provide you more realistic uh, management uh, goals. Uh, for example, if you look at this uh, graph, the color of the graph, the bar, reflects kung category Asia, the one with the most cover or category D with the lower cover. So this is very different from yung uh, poor, fair, good, excellent, which we don't advise anymore. Okay. The reason I tell you na, this is a more realistic scale is because notice this reef in Palawan, Tai Tai. Notice na bleach siya ng 2010, the coral cover by 2011 was in category D, less than 22%. The following year, it graduated to category C. 2013, we were not able to visit it. 2014, na graduate na naman siya to category B. One year later, na graduate na siya sa category A. If you use the old scale, poor reef yan, agat mag ka, poor pa rin yan, likely. Okay. Hindi, hindi magbabago dahil ang lalaki ng agwat ng mga scales ng Gomez and Alcala. Where did our scales come from? Uh, they're not arbitrary. Like, unlike the old scale, Na sinabi ko, pag poor yan, agad mag-retiro ka poor yan. Pero kung excellent yan, uh, isang bagir lang siguro, bagsak ka na dun sa iba. Okay. Uh, we don't like to use the term poor because a reef, according to this study, which unfortunately is a Caribbean one, suggests that a reef even with 10% coral cover is not supposed to be condemned to being ah, poor na naman, therefore pwede nang sirain or sira na naman. A 10% coral cover reef is still growing. Okay, 22, which is our first cutoff, is the average for the Indo-Pacific. This is based on 3,000 surveys. Mostly reef check though. Uh, the 33, is based on because when we did this scale originally in 2017, the average for uh, Tubataha was around 33, actually 34. Uh, and even in Tubataha, I remember in one recent meeting, people think na Tubataha is 100% coral cover. I have never seen that. Uh, in Tubataha, the highest we've seen is 57. Okay. But it is category A here, but doesn't even count as excellent in the old scale. This one, I have not shown this slide for a long time. Uh, one reason we want you to look at well-developed reefs. 17 of our 19 category A's are well-developed. 31 of 34 of our well-developed reefs are category B. They tend to have higher cover. And that shouldn't be surprising because these are old reefs, well-developed, kaya nga sila old. Even the richness scale, it is not arbitrary, it's based on Tubataha. And where do you have the highest richness? 11 of 13 uh, richness category A reefs are well-developed. Okay. 
So these surveys are done on the northeast facing or south west facing reef slopes of reefs, fringing reefs in the Philippines, randomly chosen, walang bias. And we get these numbers. If you use the same criteria to select your comparison reef, at least, or the one, two, or three reefs that you can survey if your resources are limited, then you can use these scales if you use the same criteria that we use. Uh, because as I showed you in the satellite images, this is old data uh, from Tubataha, uh, 1980s paper. Notice the values. Okay. Yung naka underline parehong depths. Okay. If you consider where the monsoons are coming from, you will notice na if you look at the slopes na hindi nakaharap sa monsoon, like itong north atoll ng Tubataha, the orientation is actually parallel to the monsoons. If you look at the reef slopes that are parallel to the monsoons, notice O oh, bakit mas mataas yung cover niya? Indeed, mas mataas yung cover nila. Pero pag pinuntahan mo yung mga lugar na yan, pare-pareho yung coral. Minsan iisa lang. Like huge stretches of Acropora brugemani. Okay. So remember yung slide ko after the Y slide. We're looking for places where both cover and richness is high. Itong matataas dito sa tubata, mataas ang cover, mababa yung richness. Okay. They are equivalent to these places in the lagoons. Mataas ang cover, mababa ang richness. And uh, kung akropora yan, uminit yung tubig, ubus yung corals yan, kumalat ang crown of thorns yan, yan ang una niyang uubusin. So high cover, low diversity reefs, uh, they don't face the monsoons. So this is the work of Nika. I think Nika is in the meeting. Uh, she looked at all the stations surveyed by Nacre and did a classification. And she found that if it's facing the Habagat coral cover, is around 26%. If it faces the Amihan, coral cover averages to around 19%. Okay. And if it does not face the monsoon, if it's found in lagoons near coastal settlements at that, kinito ang madalas mong makikita. Okay. Uh, mataas nga yung cover pero iisa, dalawa lang yung coral. Notice the average is higher but the richness will be lower. Okay. And so, if you want to generalize, this is how to think about it. Okay. So, type 1 here faces the Habagat. Type 2 faces the Amihan. Type 3 does not face the monsoons. Okay. So if you have a circular island, type 1 faces the Habagat, the north, the southwest. Type 2 faces the northeast. If your island is shaped this way, same thing. Type 1 faces the southwest. Type 2 faces the northeast. If you're going to survey these reefs, you will find higher coral cover in type 1. If the island is shaped this way, like the North Atoll, 
ng tubataha, you will get type 3 na, not facing either monsoon. Dito masyadong maliit. So not likely magde-develop yung type 3. And dyan, oops, the average will be higher. Which is misleading kasi tingnan mo ngayon ang susunod. This is now richness. And notice, like cover, mas mataas yung richness in type 1. The reefs that the reef community type that faces the southwest monsoon. If you look at the richness of the coral communities that does not face the monsoon, the monsoons, its cover will be higher, but its richness will be lower. Okay. We'll put the two numbers together. So there's a recent paper by Fleur Panga. Uh, they were comparing the reefs being monitored by rare around the Philippines. They compared it to the national average. And they found that their reefs were higher than national average. Okay. One conclusion that you can derive from that study is since they were monitoring reefs in MPAs, that MPA is being managed well. But there is an alternative interpretation to that and it does not have anything to do with management. It's because if you plot and I actually ask for the coordinates of those reefs. Most of their reefs were type 3. So it does not mean the reefs were being managed properly. They might well be managed properly, but there is an element na it's because the reefs that were being protected, being managed, and being monitored are type 3 reefs. Hindi nakaharap sa amihan, hindi nakaharap sa bagat. The coral cover will be high, which makes people feel good. But... Uh, is going to be very vulnerable to disturbance because ang konti nung variety ng coral stone. Like I mentioned earlier, kaya mataas yung cover niyan, usually mga branching, and usually yung mga branching ang unang bibigay pag uminit yung tubig, at usually yung branching ang unang kakainin pag nagkaroon ng crown of stones, heartbreak, and ano ang nangyayari ngayon. Okay. So if you have a bay does not face the monsoons, it's going to be type 3. Mataas ang cover, mababa ang richness. If you have a bay that's facing the southwest, and this is why we suggest stratification kung mid-bay, bay head, bay mouth, because the bay mouth will have type 1. Yung uh, bay head will have type 3. Okay. And so if you want an average for a large area assessment, you have to make sure na represent mo yung different types. You will have a similar situation, depende sa laki ng bay, if the bay is facing the northeast. Okay. And notice again, type 3 tends to have high cover, low richness. And if you're dealing with a cluster of islands, ganyan na magiging distribution na ma-expect mo dun sa cover values and so on. So ang point ko in showing you this is not for you to remember all this. Uh, the point is, if you use the rules that we described, you 
will get numbers that can be compared against the scales and benchmarks that we described. If you are not aware of the role of monsoons, where you are in the bay, where that bay is facing, you will end up with data and you will end up with data now will likely mislead you into thinking na oh, okay pa naman dito or tama yung ginagawa namin when in fact it's just that the corals are distributed differentially across large areas and the kind of coral is also the same and we have to look at the combination of both cover and richness I have a few slides na lang just to show you uh, other examples where you could be misled. Dito, in fairness to the people monitoring Pag-asa Island in the Kalayaan, first, di ba, I reminded you na that's not a fringing reef. It's part of an atoll. And so the southwest facing part of the reefs of Pag-asa are actually on this reef here. And so this should be monitored as well, uh, not just the northeast facing side. And remember, the northeast facing side usually has lower cover and richness compared to the southwest facing side. In fairness to them, nandito yung militia. And so the closest they get to the southwest is here. Dito sa arrow na to. Okay. In fact, a lot of their stations apparently are here. But that's not going to tell you much because that's going to be a type 3 community okay so they only have information about the status of reefs in pagasa for type 2 and type 3 because the type 1 reef is on the other end or maybe here but they will be harassed by the militia to get there so that the data is not very representative okay uh this is a uh, island coral atlas map of Linapakan. And this is what I would expect uh, based on this image. Okay. Most of the reefs will be type 3, mataas ang cover, mababa ang richness, but you will have type 1 and type 2. And you have to make sure those are sampled as well. This is a, one exception. I think my last slide. Uh, this is Pamalikan Island, I think it's the original name. It's now better known as Amanpulo. If you look closely, is the reef is facing the northwest or the southeast. Okay. Ito, hindi, hindi solid, buhangin, hindi kantilado the reef seems to be facing the wrong way. Okay. And therefore, you should put your stations here. Why is that weird? It's because there's uh, big reefs on the northeast and the southwest. And so the waves generated by the monsoons are coming from the northwest or the southeast. And so in some cases, you have to be careful about situations like this uh, because the rules about the Mihan and Habagat uh, will not apply here. Okay. Uh, and dito naman, uh, mis mistakes like this are sometimes made this is Bulinao, the reef flat and the beginnings of a lagoon is three kilometers wide. The front of the reef is here facing the northeast. But if you go here, you will find a reef with a reef slope. Okay. Uh, but that's behind another reef. And like uh, in Amanpulo, you're not facing the open sea anymore and you will find things that are going to be different. This will be type 3, this will be type 2. 
Okay, I'm kind of over time, pero any questions? Those are the reasons why we suggested the rules that we suggest. 